Several months ago, I made a video about the top 10 places to retire outside the US based on the latest global retirement index. I figured I would keep the series going because the shorts I've been posting on TikTok and YouTube shorts are getting a lot more views than my long-term content on YouTube. Retiring outside the US is becoming more common and popular due to the rising cost of living here in the US. Healthcare alone would cost retirees on average $300,000 throughout their retirement. We have a complicated healthcare system and if you compare it to how much each person spends on healthcare, we have one of the highest health consumption expenditures per capita. Now, people who are looking to retire abroad aren't necessarily trying to relinquish or renounce their citizenship in the US. I'm definitely not one of them. And I was an immigrant to this country and while this country isn't perfect, I'm still grateful for the opportunity it has given me. I grew up in several countries in Asia throughout my childhood and I like to share some of my experiences in this video. When my wife and I reach our fat fire number at $3.7 million, we're going to strongly consider living both in the US and outside of the US, especially when this temperature in Vegas hits 117 degrees, making me feel like I live in an oven. If you're brand new to my channel, my name is Sai and welcome. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the top 10 places to retire in Asia, specifically in East Asia and Southeast Asia. I'm gonna talk about the process to obtain a visa, the cost of healthcare, the average rent for an apartment or home prices, and the average cost of living in that area. Indonesia is the largest archipelagic country in the world with over 17,000 islands on Southeast Asia located on the equator right in between Asia and Australian continents and between the Pacific and Indian Oceans. One of the islands named Bali is located just 2,800 miles northwest of Australia and 2,400 miles east of Jakarta. Bali is famous for gorgeous beaches, volcanic mountains, delicious food, and fascinating Hindu culture and temples. And according to the expats living there, you can have a nice quality of life at a low cost of living and it's one of the fastest growing spots for expats, especially from Australia, to retire early. The total cost of living is between $720 and $2,600 a month for a single person depending on your lifestyle. You can rent an apartment for as little as $200 a month or as high as $1,300 a month if you want to live in a villa. If you want to live a moderate lifestyle, then you shouldn't cost you any more than $2,000 a month on a single person's budget. The only downside is the lack of medical care in Bali. If you have a major illness or injury, you'll need to be treated in Denpasar, which is located in the south of the island. So if you live far away from Denpasar, then it might become a major inconvenience. You would also have to purchase your own private healthcare insurance for about $100 a month. It would cost you more if you're moving your family there. If you're looking to retire in Bali, you'll need to apply for a residence visa, but it's not as easy as in other countries. The retirement visa requires you to be at least 55 years old, have proof of medical insurance, hire locals to work for your household, a sponsor letter from an Indonesian sponsor or agent, and pay $1,000 for the initial application fee, and then $800 annually. If you wanna just try out Bali, you can also get a 30-day tourist visa for $35 and extend it to 60 days, or a social visa for 180 days if you haven't quite reached your retirement age. By the way, if you wanna learn how to invest for your early retirement, you can get our free fire resources by visiting firesidechat.com contact. You can also check out the Fireside Chat shop, and I have all of my stuff on my bookshelf, at firesidechat.com slash shopping. The next country I wanna talk about is Singapore, and it's not cheap for expats to live in Singapore, and the exchange rate is not favorable because it's almost 70 cents US dollars to one Singapore dollar. Singapore is a multicultural country with four official languages, English, Tamil, Malay, and Mandarin. And the country celebrates multiple religions throughout the year. It is also reported to be the cleanest country in the world because its authority could put you in prison for smoking, chewing gum, spitting, or walking naked in your house. Singapore has five regions, central, east, north, northeast, and west regions. According to the people living there, the central region is the most expensive area to live in with studio apartments at $3,000 a month, 
or a three bedroom apartment up to $6,000 a month. The North region is supposedly the least expensive with $1,800 a month in rent for a studio. The World Health Organization ranks Singapore's sixth best healthcare system in the world. However, expats are not qualified for their public healthcare because it's strictly for their citizens and permanent residents. Singapore does not offer retirement visas for expats, so you only have three options to live in Singapore for the long term. An employment pass, a global investor program, or a foreign artistic talent permit. The employment pass is basically you have to be hired by a Singaporean company. The global investor program requires expat investors to invest a minimum of 2.5 million Singapore dollars or 1.8 million US dollars. If you have a special talent in arts, photography, dance, music, or film, you could be qualified for permanent residency under the foreign artistic talent permit. Next, let's talk about Japan, but specifically in Yokohama. I spent the first six years of my life living in Tokyo all the way through kindergarten and Japanese was actually my first language. It's known for worldwide pop culture like manga, anime, video games, architecture, traditions, and so much more. Japan has probably the best transportation system in the world and the trains can literally take you pretty much everywhere. While Tokyo has more attractions, Yokohama is much cheaper than Tokyo for a vacation or a long-term stay. The average rent for an apartment in Yokohama is around $700 a month, but it could be a lot higher if you choose to live in a place with more space. The average cost of living in Yokohama is around $1,500 a month, but again, it could be a lot higher depending on your lifestyle and accommodations. The healthcare system in Japan is ranked top 10 in the world by the World Health Organization. Expats who live in Japan for over a year can enroll themselves in the national health insurance. You will be responsible for 30% of their, your medical expenses while the government pays for the other 70%. However, getting a permanent visa is extremely difficult in Japan. To stay in Japan longer than 90 days, you have to get a working visa or a spousal visa. So you have to either get a job or marry a Japanese citizen. The permanent visa takes years to process and comes with several requirements. The application for the permanent residency also requires you to go through a test process to prove you are fluent in Japanese, display good conduct during your stay in Japan, pay income tax, and have a strong understanding of Japanese culture. Vietnam is a Southeast Asian country known for its beaches, landscapes, food, and thriving tourism. Its neighbors include China to the north, and Laos and Cambodia to the west, and the country looks like a letter S that lies by the South China Sea. One of the coastal cities called Da Nang is located 400 miles north of Ho Chi Minh City, and it's the tourist capital of South Central Vietnam. Vietnam in general is attracting many American expats, and even Vietnam War veterans are returning to Vietnam to retire there. And Vietnam's cost of living is really, really low, and according to the people living there, most couples can live comfortably for less than $1,500 a month. For some individuals, you could live as little as $1,000 a month. You could rent a three bedroom, three bath house in Da Nang for as little as $500 a month. And most of them are not even a five or 10 minute walk to the beach. For healthcare, it's better for expats to get their private health insurance because they're required to take care of their own medical bills. And most expats would prefer to go to private health clinics because of the quality of care. The cost of health care depends on your age and the status of your health, so make sure to take out an international health insurance policy before moving to Vietnam. Vietnam does not offer retirement visas, but you have several other options if you want to live there for the long term. You can apply for visas that are valid for up to one year. You can extend your visa within Vietnam, but it comes with a higher fee. Some expats choose to save money by leaving Vietnam after a year and then reapply for another one-year visa at the embassy. The next one I want to talk about is Thailand. Thailand is located west of Laos and Cambodia, southeast of Myanmar and north of Malaysia. Then there's the Gulf of Thailand, which is where Bangkok is, located in the south of the country. But Chiang Mai in the north is expats' favorite retirement destination for many years. The cost of living in Chiang Mai can be as low as $1,200 a month. The average two-bedroom rent is about $500 a month, or if you want something fancier, then it can be as high as $1,000 a month. 
The locals there are very friendly and not to mention their delicious local Thai food. They have western style shopping centers, food courts and golf clubs all over Chiang Mai. I also read that you could buy a beer for as cheap as 75 cents USD. According to the people living there, Thailand has one of the best healthcare systems in the region. Expats have to, however, obtain private health insurance prior to living there. Public health insurance is only available for Thai citizens. The private hospitals are equipped with English-speaking doctors and nurses, as well as high-quality hospital equipment. The cost of private international health insurance will depend on your age and health. And in order to obtain a retirement visa in Thailand, you have to be at least 50 years old and have a Thai bank account. You also have to show that you have at least 800,000 Thai baht in your bank account, or it's about $22,000 in USD, or you have an income of at least $1,800 per month, or a combination of both. Your passport from your origin can't expire within a year of arrival. The next one I want to talk about is Taiwan. Taiwan is at the junction of the East and South China Seas in the Northwestern Pacific Ocean. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past 10, 20, or 30 years, there's heightened tension between the People's Republic of China and the Republic of China. I lived in Taiwan for six years in the 1990s. My mom's side of the family was originally from Taiwan, while my father's side of the family was from South Korea. Despite its geopolitical tensions, according to an article from Business Insider in 2021, many expats rank Taiwan higher than anywhere else when it comes to quality of life, working abroad, and friendliness. And I can say that I had a great time in Taiwan when I lived there. And about 10% of expats living in Taiwan are from the US. While China considers Taiwan as a part of its territory, Taiwan considers itself to be more of a democratic island that aligns with the West. In Taipei, which is the capital city of Taiwan, located in the north of the island, the average for a two-bedroom apartment is about $1,500 a month, and it can go a lot higher if you choose to live in more of a luxurious area. According to the people living there now, your cost of living depends entirely on your lifestyle. Your version of comfort may be different from others. Some say it's better to earn $3,000 a month and some say $4,500 a month. The Taiwanese government has policies in place to allow foreigners living in Taiwan to get social security retirement benefits from the US. You could also enroll in their government subsidized care or the national health insurance and expats get taxed 5% of their wages for NHI premiums. Their healthcare plan is still far cheaper than the ones in the US. The most challenging part of retiring in Taiwan is deciding which visa works best for you since they don't offer a retirement visa. You could get a tourism visa for 90 days at a time by exiting and re-entering Taiwan to receive another 90-day visa. The easiest way might be the investor's visa, which requires you to invest a minimum amount of 200,000 US dollars in a Taiwanese company. The next one I want to talk about is Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia is a popular retirement location for expats since the early 1920s. Their beaches are ranked top 10 best beaches in the world and it's almost like a central hub between Singapore, Thailand, and Indonesia where you can plan your weekend getaways. There's a large expat population living in Kuala Lumpur and people living there enjoy scuba diving, nature and wildlife tours, and visiting the Petrona Twin Towers. According to the early retirees in Malaysia, a couple could comfortably live there with $2,500 a month. The average rent is about $600 a month, which comes with utilities and other amenities. If you want a really nice apartment in Penang with an ocean view, then it could cost you anywhere between $1,000 to $2,000 a month to rent. Healthcare in Malaysia costs a fraction of what you pay at home. Each doctor's visit is about $20 and dental cleaning is about $25. Expats are not qualified for the public health insurance program in Malaysia. You could pay for a private health insurance company for as little as $100 a month, depending on your age and health. In order to apply for the retirement visa, which is called MM2H and stands for Malaysia My Second Home, retirees have to show proof of retirement income of at least $2,500 a month. You have to maintain certain liquid assets anywhere between $80,000 and $125,000 depending on your age. 
you can check out the Malaysian website for the MM2H visa requirements and I will put their link in the description below. The next country I want to talk about is South Korea. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're a veteran ever been stationed in Korea in the past. I've been to South Korea several times in the past. If you love shopping, sightseeing, singing karaoke, K-pop, and food, you can't go wrong with living in Seoul. And there's also a bilateral income tax treaty between the US and South Korea, which avoids double taxation if you work for an employer there. The agreement makes it easier for retirees to qualify for retirement benefits by letting you add together your social security credits in both countries. I'll link the agreement in the description below. The average rent for a one bedroom apartment in Seoul was about $400 a month in 2021, but that has likely increased due to inflation. But it really depends on where you want to live and the lifestyle you choose. The cost of living in Seoul is in the top 30% of the most expensive cities in the world. You don't have to live right in the middle of the city. You could save significantly more money by living outside of the city limits. The cost of food and transportation are much more affordable so they sort of offset the cost of your rent. South Korea does not provide free healthcare. The cost of healthcare depends entirely on the expat's income. Having private health insurance may be more effective and beneficial if you ever have to go through a major medical treatment. And if you want to stay in Korea for the long term, you can apply for a long term F1 visa if you have Korean family members residing there, an F2 visa if you're married to a Korean national, or an F3 visa for those accompanying a spouse or other family members with a working visa in Korea. The next country I want to talk about is the Philippines. The Philippines is an archipelago with more than 7,000 islands covering 116,000 square miles. The city of Makati is located southeast of Manila, which is the capital of the Philippines and it's the financial center of the country. The cost of living in Makati is higher than anywhere else in the country because of its business development and infrastructure expansion. According to the people living there, you would typically need a budget of $1,500 a month but in Makati, it's better to have at least $2,000. It really depends on your lifestyle or accommodations. Renting a small house in Makati could cost you around $700 to $1,000 a month, depending on the area. Expats living there recommend getting private health insurance coverage prior to your arrival because the medical treatments there can be expensive without coverage. You can visit the Philippines without a visa if you're staying there for less than 30 days. You can apply for the Philippine retirement visa or special resident retiree visa for foreign nationals if you choose to retire there. You have to be at least 35 years old and the required time deposit is $50,000. If you're at least 50 years old and have a retirement pension of $800 a month, then the required time deposit is only $10,000. There are more and more Americans moving to Cambodia over the last decade and it's becoming an expat hotspot in Southeast Asia. Cambodia is a small country surrounded by Vietnam, Thailand, Laos, and the Gulf of Thailand. If you're looking to retire and enjoy the laid-back tropical lifestyle, Cambodia might be your destination choice to retire alongside 100,000 other expats already living there. A single person can live in Cambodia for as little as $1,200 a month and a couple for $2,000 a month. The average rent in Kampot is around $300 a month and if you want to get a three bedroom house then it could be around $500 or $600 a month. The cost of living in Cambodia in general is very affordable with everything from groceries, restaurants, utilities, and entertainment. And I heard that you can buy a beer for as little as 70 cents a bottle. What's also interesting is that Cambodia has top-notch dental clinics with state-of-the-art treatments with highly certified surgeons and technicians and they're far cheaper than what they would cost in the US. If you have a job in Cambodia, then you're required to sign up for their public health care system which costs 2.6% of your wages. Most retirees opted to own private health care insurance so they could go to a better private health care facilities. If you want to retire in Cambodia, you can get a retirement visa if you're over the age of 55 unemployed and you have to show proof that you're financially sustainable without working. The retirement visa is initially only good for one year but you can renew it for $300 every year and it comes with multiple entries in and out of the country. You have to show proof of pension papers and social security retirement benefits and have enough money in your bank account to live in the country without being employed. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to know more about how to pick a retirement location, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.